everybody back from the test, as it were. Uh, scores have been posted. I think I sent you an email letting you know that scores were posted. Did, I think I also sent the email letting you know that this, your score, as posted, uh, included a one question, also known as a 6.25 point curve. Really? Yes, it did. I just a curve. It's stereotype. It's not. It's a practice. I mean, there'll, there'll probably be a one point curve for the final as well, or not a one point, but one question. One question curve for the final as well. Because you're not. Because I've used the same exams for a while. You're, you know, I'm, you're not competing just again with one another, but kind of with history, and but you know, and so and so I kind of. That's how I know. Well, you know, this class did bad. Not you folks necessarily, but. Uh, you know, if a particular class does bad, I kind of know it because, well, the, it's the same test. It's the same videos, for heaven's sake, from now on, you know, and so, uh, yeah, anyway. What? Oh, you shouldn't be so sly in the front row if you don't want Dr. Fessler to know, know or notice. So today, what are we going to talk about? And, I'll, and you, we'll, you'll, you'll get to see the Michael, the second person always gets caught. Um, the da, 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, da, 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 da. we'll we'll let you see the exams. I will let you see the exams. You will get to see the exams at the end of class today. Isn't that exciting? Woohoo! So in the meantime, though, we've got to learn some stuff. Yeah. How about standard cost and flexible budgeting? Standard cost and flexible budgeting. What page in the handy handbook? We are rocking and rolling. Are we going to get to page three hundred today? I bet we might. That'll be a time for celebration. Did anybody bring confetti and party hats? Maybe a little little woohoo horn. Okay. Uh oh. Day two, day three, day one. I had the wrong. I had the wrong notes. I'm supposed to tell you a story. Did anybody? Has anybody in here ever purchased a textbook before? Raise your hand. I have. I don't read. You have. You've never purchased a textbook. You've. I mean, I'm. I'm thinking all of you have purchased a textbook. So imagine, and so you. So you. You've developed this expectation, have you not, about how much you're going to have to spend on every class, right? I mean, you're fairly vet most of you are fairly veteran students, you know, and so you, you, you've got a feeling, a sense for how much you're going to have to spend for a class. Okay, so you walk in to buy a textbook, buy your textbooks for Dr. Fessler's class, you know, at the beginning of the semester, and you paid less than you expected, I suspect. Brandon? Yes. <laughs> no, I'm saying yes, I, I paid less. Than you paid, <laughs> but that's okay. And so there are two, this is, this is our question, but this is our book buying example. Hark. There are two reasons why what you actually paid might be less than what you expected to pay. So why was the actual difference in the expectation? There are two reasons for why, two reasons in general, why that might or could occur. Quantity. You, you had to purchase, and this is actually number two. Well, actually, you're reading. Are you reading this? Because I can read it flat all the way over there. Can you? <laughs> Quantities number one. You had to buy, do you not want a copy of the periodic table? I don't, I don't blame you. I, uh, I actually have it in number one in my notes, although it really doesn't matter. It's just Dr. Fessler being fussy in his fussy sort of way. So, <laughs> fussy Fessler. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh heavens. And so number one, quantity. You had to purchase fewer books than you expected 
for a class. And what would the other reason be? Price. Price. The book or books that you purchased cost less than you expected to. And this is a really, I mean, this is what, what I'm now telling you, I didn't figure out until after I graduated from college, literally. And that is any variance, any difference between an expectation and what actually happened can be described using some combination of these two factors. The quantity was bigger or smaller than expected, or and or a combination of, along with, the price was more or less than expected. And the combination of those two factors can explain any difference between any expectation and what actually occurs, okay? or actually has occurred. Okay. And so that is a that's a useful thing to kind of know and think about. And so I just give it to you up front. <coughs> and you spend a lot of time, or you can spend a lot of time making those explanations. I used to spend 25% of my working year explaining vi uh, variances between expectations and actual. I'd spend 25% of my year doing the budget. I'd spend 25% of my year, roughly 25% of my year, doing variance explanations. And then the other 50% of the year was spent doing kind of non-standardized routine stuff. Okay, let's look at the next page. Static budget. Is, a, is valid for only one level of activity. The static budget is valid for only one level of activity. And that's really, so when we say budget, normally what most people are thinking about and describing is a static budget, which is a budget that is valid for only one level of activity. A flexible budget is geared towards all levels of activity within the relevant range. Is geared towards all levels of activity within the relevant range, and geared, G-E-A-R-E-D. <laughs> geared towards all levels of activity within the relevant range. Geared towards all levels of activity. I really threw you off, didn't I? Geared towards all levels of activity within the relevant range. Okay? Now, Budget, when we talk about a budget down there, a budget, and I'm going to be very careful and fussy about this, a budget, I'm going to, when I speak about a budget, I'm going to refer to just a total, or I'm always going to refer to a total forecasted amount, so a total amount. So when I talk about a budget, I'm talking about a total amount. When I talk about a standard, I'm describing, and standards, the next word that we're going to define down there, is going to be a standard I'm going to define as a per unit budget. Standard is a per unit budget. And so immediately below the standard, I'm going to tell you this mathematical, I mean the standard times the number of units equals the budget. You can put that immediately below the per unit budget uh, definition. So that's the math, there's a mathematical relationship between a budget and a standard. And the kind of in-between variable, if you will, is the number of units. So the standard times the number of units, clearly this is budgeted number of units is going to give us our budget. So there's our mathematical relationship between our total, our budget in total, and our standard on a per unit basis. And this is how we get a flat.